So they're going to they're going to postpone. The article twenty two. Yeah, they don't Try some house one. No, that's that, that's naturally that's out. The article that they're going to postpone is the land swap. The annual and special town meetings will come to order. Okay. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Good evening. I've been advised by the town clerk that the warrants have been properly served. I would entertain a motion to dispense with the formal reading of the warrant. It's been moved, seconded. Discussion there being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted and declared unanimous. Thank you. I have nominated Peter Toppin as assistant moderator for this meeting and would entertain a motion to appoint him. It's been moved, seconded, discussion. There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Would the assistant moderator and the following tellers stand to be sworn by the town clerk? Susan Frankel, Jack Manning, Penny Scott Pipes, Peter Toppin, Irene Murray, Christopher Merarkin, Allison Short. Please raise your right hand. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear to faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all duties that come upon you as a member of the town meeting tonight as tellers? I do. All right. Thank you for your service. How about a round of applause for those unsung heroes that we just swore in? I've been advised by the school committee that there'll be no food and no drink in this room. So if you're eating and drinking, you better go now, because they've got their eye on you. I mean, it's a nice place. You don't want to mess it up. Thank you. Dignitaries. Uh, I had heard that Congressman Stephen Lynch might be visiting. Uh, yeah. No, we don't see him yet. Well, he'll let us know when he's here. I'd ask the chairman of the advisory committee, Lincoln Heineman, to introduce his board members. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, my name is Lincoln Heineman. I am the chair of the advisory committee. Um, <clears throat> seated here is Jamie Gilmore. Uh, member Jerry Kelly, Member Mike Westort, Member Sean DeLacy, Member Patrice Metro, and uh, Member Anthony Antoniello, and not able to be here uh, because of uh, work and illness, um, respectively, are Mark Sandham, are the Vice Chair of the Committee, and uh, Jeff Burns. Would the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, the Honorable Mara Curran, introduce the board members that Town Administrator, Town Accountant, and Town Council, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good evening. With us this evening to my right, we have our Finance Director, Nancy Holt, our Town Administrator, Jim Boudreau, Vice Chair of the Board of Selectmen, Tony Vignani, Selectman John Dennehy, Selectwoman Karen Canfield, Selectman Sean Harris, and our Town Council, Cindy Mara. Thank you. And I'd ask the chairman of the school committee, Michael Long, to introduce his board members on the school committee and the superintendent, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Hello, everybody. My name is Michael Long. I'm the chairman of the school committee. Also in attendance tonight are Michael Hayes, Peter Gates, Janice Lindblom, and Rich Hebert. Superintendent Ron Griffin and business director Paul Donlin are also here. And we also have members of the administration in the back as well. Thank you. Okay. And would Chairman Chris Karsha of the Capital Planning Committee please introduce his committee? Uh. I'm Chris Karsha, Chairman of the Capital Planning Committee. Uh, the members of the committee this year were Frank Nash, Jack Whitaker, um, Joe, hang on, I had my pen. Gibbons. <laughs> Joe Gibbons. Anthony Antonello was the advisory committee representative. 
Peter Gates was a school committee representative. Karen Canfield was a selectman representative. And as always, our town administrator, Jim Boudreau, was a member. Thank you. For announcements, I'd like to recognize Emily Matthews and Sean Pfeiffer, who've worked very diligently on the technical end uh, necessary to make this meeting possible. If you'd kindly give them a round of applause, I know they'd appreciate it. And since the last time we've gathered, uh, a few of us have passed. And if you just take a moment to reflect on the following persons whom we thank for their service and remember quite dearly. Diane L. Safarian, December 3rd, 2017, Situate Schools Transportation. Doris McGill, December 9th, 2017, Situate Schools. William G. Smith III, December 15th, 2017, Situate Schools. Charlotte Bunny Gillis, December 26th, 2017, former secretary for the Board of Selectmen for 20 years. Julianne Kreutler, December 31st, 2017, Situate Schools. Janet M. Simon, January 31st, 2018, Situate Schools. And Arthur Fletcher, March 22nd, 2018, Situate Fire Department. Thank you for your help and good luck at the next town meeting. Upcoming events, Shipshape Day in April 28th, 2018. Hopefully the snow drifts have melted and we can pick up the trash that's been sheltering onto them. Right, my name is Richard Bowen and I am the town moderator. The moderator chairs the meeting and decides questions of order. I do not vote on articles, but at this time I'd like to take a couple of minutes to tell you how our town meeting works. Situate has two branches of government, the executive branch represented here by the Selectmen and School Committee, and the legislative branch of government, Town Meeting. The executive branch boards, whose members are our guests here today, have made requests to you asking for your approval. These requests take the form of articles in the warrant that you'll be voting upon tonight. As you do your work, you have a very important friend in your work. The advisory committee is your board. It is town meeting standing committee and meets all year to examine executive branch budgets. The advisory committee works hard in serving as your watchdog and it will make recommendations to you about each of the executive branch requests before you. You should pay close attention to its work. Like any legislative body, we operate under certain procedural rules. These derive from state law, parliamentary manual, and the charter bylaws and custom. Here's a summary. All non-voters, we done down there? Thank you. All non-voters except for professional consultants advising town boards must sit in the non-voter section. Uh, it's up there in the back. So if you're a non-voter, please retire to that section. Ordinarily, only registered voters may address the meeting. However, I will assume the consent of the meeting to allow non-voters to speak, provided they are duly recognized and unless a timely objection is raised. Persons wishing to address the meeting must, each time rising to speak, identify themselves to the meeting by name and address. This traditional courtesy shows respect to those present and helps in the keeping of meeting minutes. Speaker, speakers representing a board, community group, or client should state this relationship to the meeting before speaking. If you are an article sponsor, please make your motion before your speech. After making a motion, an article sponsor will be allowed up to 10 minutes for a presentation. Sponsors of resolutions will be allowed five minutes. Sp sponsors need not use the full allotment of time given. All motions must be seconded, and no motion is in order until it has been seconded. Only after recognized by the moderator may a member address the meeting. Shouting out from the floor or speaking without recognition shows disrespect to your fellow town meeting members and will not be allowed. Speakers from the floor are allowed five minutes on the first round of discussion on an article and three minutes on the second round. A speaker from the floor who wishes to address the meeting for a second time on an article must wait until persons who have not yet spoken have had their turn. Speakers, please confine your remarks to the motion that is on the floor. Uh, please address only matters of general interest and do not uh, engage in personal discussion or personal attacks on other persons present. 
Should you weary of debate, you may offer a motion as follows. I move the question. Please remember this important procedural point. You may not make your speech and then say, I move the question. If you wish to move the question, just make the motion and um, we'll be all set. A point of order relates only to questions of procedure and is not a mechanism for reviving an article or prolonging debate. There are no points of information. A question about an article should be raised only during the debate on that article. Now let me take a minute to explain counting and how I count votes. Uh, I offer this explanation because when I was out gathering my 100 signatures, a lady asked me, why did I count hands after I had clearly heard the vote, the voice vote? And uh, she went on to suggest that perhaps I didn't like the voting result and was attempting to alter the result by calling for a show of hands. Well, no, that's not how it works. Uh, different articles have different quantums of vote. Majority, two-thirds, four-fifths, nine-tenths. And Madam Clerk and her assistant have to keep records of your votes. And so sometimes it's very important for the people that Madam Clerk has to deal with after town meetings, such as bond council, the attorney general, to have very clear records on those votes where something more than a majority voice vote uh, is held. So if I ask for a show of hands, it's usually for record keeping purposes, not because I didn't like the way you voted. Uh, you'd be surprised about what I think about the way you vote. Um, and honestly, I would probably lose most bets as to how the votes would go anyway. So uh, for the lady who very kindly signed my nomination papers, that's the explanation. Um, Right. On voice votes, I listen to hear whether the motion passes or fails. If you question my call, please rise. If seven or more voters rise, I will ask for a teller counted vote. Section 20,150G of the bylaws allows the moderator to declare two-thirds votes. If the moderator's declaration is immediately questioned by seven or more voters, we will take a count. Please silence your cell phones. I told you about food and drink. Uh, honorary resolutions, there appear to be none. Um, has the congressman here yet? Yes. No. Oh, oh, there you are. I'm sorry. <coughs> well, Congressman Stephen Lynch, would you honor us by coming forward and addressing the Situate Town meeting? The floor is yours. Thank you, Richard. Uh, good evening, everyone. It is great to be here. Uh, normally, I'm in Washington on Monday night, so uh, I'm actually delighted uh, to be at town meeting uh, with you all. I appreciate the courtesy that uh, Richard has extended to me, and I promise that I will not abuse the, uh, the privilege. We've been busy down in Washington, and I thought I might just spend a few minutes, not, not long, explaining what's been going on. Uh, believe it or not, there has been some bipartisan cooperation among Democrats and Republicans. Uh, we, several weeks ago, we, I think it's three weeks ago now, we passed a major spending bill, uh, omnibus bill, that had, I think, uh, many elements that are important to the families of, of Situate and of Massachusetts and of the country. Uh, it was heartening to see the collaboration uh, between both parties and actually working in the best interests of, of the American people. The bill provides funding uh, for a number of initiatives. One is the, um, the uh, Community Health Center program here in Massachusetts and across the country, $5.4 billion. Uh, there are many, many families relying on, reliant on uh, community health centers. It's a very effective way to deliver health care uh, and much cheaper than having people go to the emergency room. Uh, the spending bill also uh, allocates uh, $5.2 billion uh, for Head Start, which received uh, $9.9 .9 billion additionally uh, to the black grant, block grants that are extended. Uh, also, very importantly, uh, $3.2 billion was uh, provided for efforts to deal with the opioid crisis uh, here in America. Uh, among, within that, $500 million for the National Institute of Health, 
uh, to fund research about, about opioid addiction, 100 million for rural communities uh, uh, where the outreach is much more difficult uh, for reaching those who, who are affected. 467 million uh, to help the CDC efforts to prevent overdoses and monitor the crisis. And uh, 300 million increase to fund local law enforcement uh, to combat the opioid crisis and also dealing with overdose situations, uh, uh, reversal medications, so-called like Narcan. Uh, so there were 447 million for grant programs for, for those local communities. Uh, the bill also uh, provides $7 billion in increasing for veterans' health care, which is extremely important. Uh, we actually have uh, two major, v well, actually three major VA hospitals in, in the 8th Congressional District, to which uh, situate is part. Uh, we have one in Brockton, one in Jamaica Plain, and one in West Roxbury. Uh, the, the two VA uh, hospitals in, in Brockton and in West Roxbury uh, in uh, dire straits structurally. So this $7 billion, $2 billion is, is for improving facilities. So this, we've been stuck on the two yard line uh, as far as the process to get those two hospitals uh, reconstructed. One project is about 170 million, the other one's about 154 million. Uh, but uh, this additional money that was passed in this bill will make that much more likely. The bill also reauthorizes the national flood insurance program, but only through the end of July. This was a provision that was put in uh, by the chairman of the uh, Financial Services Committee, uh, Mr. Hanseling of Texas. And uh, he has been uh, somewhat, not somewhat, he's been obstructionist uh, during the whole national flood insurance debate. Uh, to be honest with you, his, his area of Texas has not had a flood since Noah. And uh, he doesn't believe in the National Flood Insurance Program. But uh, we here in Situate understand the relevance and the importance of that. So wh what's going to happen is in July, we will, we will have to, in Congress, have another debate about the funding going forward. But in the meantime, the National Flood Insurance remapping process is, is fully underway. Uh, the new maps are supposed to come out on April 18th. We've been in daily contact with FEMA. Those are not out, they're not available yet. Uh, they're telling me the 18th is still a good date. I'm not so sure about that. It might be a week late. But there will also be uh, community meetings. I know the last time I was here for a FEMA meeting, we had, uh, I think we met at the high school, and then we, we did another meeting at Marshfield High School as well. Uh, I know that Joe Rossi, who's uh, been very active over in Marshfield with the uh, Marshfield Coastal Coalition, he's been doing great work on that. I think we're, we're trying to uh, do multiple meetings uh, in both Situate and, and Marshfield and some of the affected communities. So uh, we, we do have initial estimates that the increase in premiums will be about 8%. That, that's the target. So some will be less than that, some will be a little bit more, but the average, people are saying, is, a, is about 8%. Uh, we also provided $3.3 billion in federal assistance uh, for FEMA, uh, $700 million for firefighter equipment and staffing grants, uh, nearly $250 million for pre-disaster mitigation funding, and particularly here in Situate, where residents, homes, and businesses are vulnerable to hurricanes and other natural disasters. Uh, these uh, resources ensure that we'll have uh, an effective response if and when disaster strikes. The spending, the spending bill also provides $6.8 billion for the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, we've had a very strong relationship with the Army Corps of Engineers and, and they've been terrific on some of our efforts to try to uh, get some of the seawalls rebuilt and uh, that money will, will help it. Uh, help the whole process enormously. Um, let's see. I'd also like to thank uh, Jim Cantwell, our state representative. Uh, he's been a, a partner of mine while I'm in Washington four days a week. Jim's been uh, 
my right-hand person as your, as your representative. He's really done a fantastic job, very active on the, on the flood map situation, on, on, on basically every issue uh, here in Situate and, and in Marshfield, those, those parts of his district. And lastly, one of the great things I get to do is uh, nominate young people uh, to the military academies. And uh, the town of Situate has a, a long and strong history of uh, veteran service and military service. I want to recognize Tom McGowan from Nine Briarwood Lane, a graduate of Boston College High School. His parents are Christine and Brian, and uh, I'm very proud to nominate him to the U.S. Naval Academy class of 2020. And Johan Johnson from 40, 425 Hatherley Road, a graduate of Situate High School. His parents are Carol Clayson and Tristan Johnson, and uh, Johan will attend the United States Air Force Academy, also class of 2020. It's an honor for me to represent you in the United States Congress. Uh, I try my best to live up to your highest expectations. It's a great honor, it really is. Uh, it's a job that I love. It is a joy to represent you. Thank you for your participation in the town meeting. May God bless the town of Situate, and may God continue to bless these United States of America. Thank you. Congressman, thank you very much. The Congressman adds a certain luster to the occasion, and I know that it's very interesting hearing what's going on in our nation's capital, so thank you very much for that uh, fascinating summary. So, uh, while the Congressman, the Congressman must be like honey to the bees, because I've seen people flocking in and there are people standing up along the side, on both sides, and standing in the middle, and I know our fire chief would probably be very displeased by that. Uh, <clears throat> not that I'm trying to turn anyone in, but we, we have to deal with this. So, uh, before you get cast off into the outer darkness, also known as the music room, uh, I would like to try to have everyone smush in a bit and see if we can get some of these people into proper seats. Now, I also have bad news for the non-voters, because I am sending the non-voters off to the outer darkness in the name of the music room, and I do apologize for... Oh. <laughs> now, Congressman, tell that stubborn uh, individual from Texas Remember the Galveston flood. No, thank you. So, uh, my apologies to the non-voters. Uh, would one of the tellers kindly escort our esteemed non-voters to the music room where you will be able to partake of the debate? Well, you'll be able to listen to it. You won't be able to partake of it. And I don't believe there's any food or drinking over there either, in case anyone had any ideas. So, uh, now that our non-voting guests are departing, would some of you who are standing fill in some of those seats, please? We also have numerous seats. We have five very attractive seats down here in front. Uh, you're welcome to them. There are numerous empty seats in the middle of rows. Uh, push right in. Just imagine you're at the movie theater making a popcorn run. Just push right in, everyone, and then we'll see who's left standing, and then those of you standing will be sent out back. So there's motivation to find a seat. So go ahead, push in. We'll wait a minute and see how you're doing. Some prime real estate right here in the center. You standees over on the left, you'll have to sit. Now, 
Come on, everybody get cozy. It's very sociable. There have to be at least another 50 empty seats in here. Chief Stewart, the, there are two seats right next to him. <laughs> yeah, there were a couple down here where the congressman was. Very distinguished place to sit. Come on. Those of you standing over there, you better find seats. I'm going to have to send a collection basket around to drive some of you to your chairs. There are at least 20 seats over in this section. There are at least 10 seats in this section. Well, you're doing pretty well over there. Might get a couple more in. Those of you standing at the, the gateways there, you'll have to move. Move into seats here, move into seats in the music room, your choice. Tellers want to escort some of the more reluctant standees, please. Not yet. We're going to fill these seats before we use that back room. Bad enough we had to send the non-voters over. And I apologize to you non-voters. Okay, the clock is ticking. I tell you, you will not want to go out back. There are ten more seats right in the center, please. Ten more seats over here. Ten seats over here. There's room for 30 more people. I can't see that far. Huh. This is starting to look like something. What do we got out back? All my voters out back. Yeah, who, who are these folks standing over here? Yeah. You cannot stand uh, over against the wall. You'll have to take a seat. You're a gentleman. Yeah. We'll give it another minute. Mm. I've got a few seats over here to my right. Oh, very nice four seats right up front. You ladies coming in right here, just for you. Mr. Moderator. Sir. Yeah, Pete Toppin. Might I make a suggestion that next year we... Peter, could you move closer to the microphone? I can't hear Certainly. you. Certainly. I would make a suggestion that next year we return to the floor in the gymnasium so we don't have this kind of issue.
I'm sure that the Board of Selectmen, which is the board that decides the location of town meeting, uh, has heard your advice and is watching this spectacle and will <laughs> consider your recommendation. All right. I'm just beginning to think that we're not going to be able to do this all in one room. Okay. Allison, do you think you could get that lot and get them in here, please? Thank you. What we're doing now is, uh, if the people who are standing do not wish to take advantage of the available seats, uh, you will be going to what we euphemistically call the music room, um, and the tellers will show you where to go. Yeah, if you could. Anyone who's standing, just move over to the right-hand side of the stage. There are officials over there, and they'll guide you to your destination. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Peter? Guess where you're going? Pardon me? Uh, I'm asking the deputy moderator to go to the music room to preside over our late arriving flock. I can do that. You get the fashionably late. And now there's an empty seat right here. <laughs> If the towers could continue with the seating, I'm just going to walk over with Peter and have a look at what we've got out there. And then we'll get going. Thank you. Call the meeting back to order. I'll, I'll accept a motion to recess the annual town meeting until the adjournment of the special town meeting. It's been moved, seconded, discussion. There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so vote and declare unanimous. I'll accept a motion to call the special town meeting to order. It's been moved, seconded, discussion, none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so vote and declare unanimous. Article 1, on the motion. Welcome, and thank you for your patience with all that. I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $100,000 for transfer to snow and ice costs, and transfer from the stabilization fund the sum of $1 million for transfer to emergency storm costs for the purposing of balancing the fiscal year 2018 operating budget pursuant to Article 4 of the April 26, 2017 annual town meeting warrant. It's been moved, seconded, discussion. Chairman Curran. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. This article is asking permission to move $100,000 from free cash to balance the snow and ice budget and a million dollars from our stabilization account to balance our 2017 budget due to the costs associated with making repairs and cleaning up after storm costs. 
These storms that came this year caused our infrastructure some significant damage. We lost a water main along Peggotty Beach, a seawall break along Surfside Road, displaced boulders and revetments along the cliffs, and significant overwash along all of our coastline. Additionally, the clearing of roads in Hummer Rock cost the town $2,000 per hour due to the type of equipment needed to remove the size and scale of debris left on the roads from nine tides of wave overwash. We had 40 telephone poles taken down by downed trees, resulting in significant tree debris cleanup as well. Storm Riley, which was the March 1st storm, was declared a disaster, and we are seeking FEMA reimbursements. However, if lucky, we will only see 75% of those costs returned to us, and there is no timetable that we can rely on for that reimbursement. The board unanimously recommends approving this motion. From the Advisory Committee, Chairman Heinemann. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, as as uh, Selectman Curran said, this is a relatively uh, routine article in balancing the current fiscal year uh, 2018 budget. Um, the, with respect to the million dollar in million dollars in emergency storm costs, it would be transferred from the stabilization fund. Uh, the current balance of the stabilization fund is $3.8 million. Uh, the, a, a note of caution in that the stabilization fund is the primary source for cleanup of these storms and with uh, most folks' expectations that there will be more and more uh, destructive storms in the future, a note of caution is that this, this will likely be a strain on the stabilization fund going forward. Nevertheless, uh, the advisory committee uh, did unanimously uh, vote to recommend approval of this article on a seven to zero vote. Discussion from the floor. There being no one at the mics, would uh, Deputy Moderator Toppin take a voice vote in the music room and send the vote through? While we wait, I'm going to take the vote in this room. This requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, it's unanimous in this room. I'm going to go see what's happening back there. <clears throat> Unanimous in the music room, so voted and declared a unanimous vote of all rooms. <laughs> Article two, on the motion, Chairman Curran. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $705 from free cash and $657 from the water enterprise retained earnings for the purpose of paying fiscal year 2016 and 2017 unpaid bills. The moved second, a discussion, Chairman Curran. This is just a routine article to take care of bills that came in from prior years after those fiscal years had ended. Uh, one was for a drug testing bill for $705, and the other was reimbursement of $657 uh, for training for the water treatment uh, licensing. The from board unanimously supports approval of this motion. From the Advisory Committee, Chairman Heinemann. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, as Chair Curran said, this is a routine article to pay bills that were received after the end of the accounts payable period from the previous fiscal year. The Advisory Committee unanimously on a 7 to, 0, 7 to 0 vote recommends approval of this article. Discussion from the floor, there being no one at the mics. This requires, just to make it more complex, a 9 tenths vote. So, for that lady who said, why do you count these things? Oh, this is why. The Department of Revenue will get us if we don't count it right. So, uh, I'm going to call the vote in here. Uh, Dep Mr. Deputy Moderator, kindly call the vote in the music room. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. 
think we know what that one is. Uh, so voted and declared unanimous in all rooms. I'll accept, a, that's it on the special town meeting. I'll accept a motion to recess the special town meeting uh, without day and to reconvene the annual town meeting. It's been moved, seconded. No discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, and I have to see what they said. Uh, Mr. Deputy Moderator, how did it go over there? I think we're going to walkie talk. Thank you. Tin can, strings. Uh, so voted and declared unanimous. The special town meeting is dissolved, and we now return to the annual town meeting. So, um, <clears throat> we have certain formalities to address here. So, reports of the boards for the Board of Selectmen, Chairman Mara Curran. Yeah, go ahead, Mara. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good evening, and before we continue, I wanted to take a moment to briefly address three things. Our town staff, the current state of town finances, and what to expect this evening. We welcome Jim Boudreau to his first official Citra Town meeting. Jim started on January 4th, just in time to take on the consecutive Nor'easters, which I think we can all agree battered our town like no other time before. Jim comes to us with 22 years of experience as a town administrator in Norwell and in Linfield, and has already begun to make his mark in a few different ways. I have the utmost confidence that Jim will serve you well. During the months, yes, thank you. During the months of September through January, the board was fortunate to have Al Bangert step in to lead the team. When we asked Al if he would consider helping out, he didn't miss a beat. Al kept important things moving, like our senior center project and budgetary planning. The financial plan we have before us tonight is largely due to the planning and organization of Al and Nancy Holt, our director of finance, who both have the utmost confidence of the board and we're truly grateful for their dedication and service. And I want to thank Al and Nancy for all that work. Thank you. And to all town employees, your professionalism and dedication to the town of Situate wasn't more evident than during the transition time and during the most recent storms. Your ability to plan and react to situations unforeseen is admirable. Town meetings should rest assured that we have experienced, dedicated, compassionate people who are working on their behalf every day. And on behalf of the board, I want to say thank you to all of you. And I'd be remiss not to call out our Deputy of Highway, Mike Breen, who just retired, not from the highway, but from being the Situate High School hockey coach. So congratulations. <laughs> 18 terrific years. We're happy you're staying on with us. To review the past year, Situate continues to have sound financial policies that allow us to invest and plan for our future. Within the last 12 months, we saw three brand new buildings open and on budget, and that is no small feat. Our current revenues and expenses are trending within forecast, with the exception of some unforeseen expenses accumulating as a result of the storms. While other towns are scrambling and borrowing to cover such costs, Situate is different. Due to our conservative planning, we are able to tap into cash reserves to pay for damages suffered from those storms. At the close of 2017, we had over $3.2 million in free cash, which has provided us with that flexibility. This cash continues to be a critical asset for us to fund our capital plan and to offset unforeseen costs, such as those storm costs. And this year, various departments have secured over $10 million in low interest grants and loans to rebuild several sections of seawalls and other foreshore protection projects. 
The board is committed to prioritizing our coastal assessment to continue to secure federal and state funding to assist us in protecting our coastal and harbor areas. Situate can't combat climate change and sea level rise alone. And it was no mistake that Governor Baker chose Situate as the place to announce his $300 million climate resiliency bond bill. I want you to know that we have a solid, respectful partnership with the state and we will continue to foster that relationship to secure financial assistance for future coastal protection solutions. In the past year, we've seen several personnel changes due to retirements and career changes, including the retirement of our town planner, conservation officer, director of assessing, and the resignation of our HR director and the TA. Those changes have brought on fresh new staff to lead us to manage the outcome of tonight's articles. And it's great to see so many residents here. I, I wish we could have anticipated, and I'm sorry you're squished, but we certainly, to Peter's note, will not have it here again. But this is a good problem to have. Situate is at a pivotal moment, is at a pivotal moment, I can't even say it, is at a pivotal moment, and we need your involvement participating in local issues by attending town meeting and also by voting in local elections. Local government, no matter how frustrating it can be, is really where the rubber meets the road. And this is how we take care of ourselves in our community. So thank you for being here. And tonight we have one of the largest capital plans ever placed before town meeting. $10 million in capital investments to make necessary upgrades and replacements in our water and sewer systems, the golf course, a long overdue senior center design request, and a number of technology and equipment needs. These are crucial investments that our town needs to deliver the services you require. Our $76 million operating budget for the town and the schools are both being presented to you on plan and level funded in most areas. But in my opinion, there are two issues tonight before you that will define us as a town. Who we are and who we want to be. First, the capital plan includes a request for monies to design the solution for a senior center at the Old Gates site. This is long overdue, and I hope you will support our request. It is time to deliver appropriate services to the senior population. What we have today is an adequate space to deliver the services needed, and the Board of Selectmen is committed to building a new center. The second most defining issue, in my opinion, this evening is whether or not we as a town want to allow the sale of recreational marijuana. The board has voted unanimously to support the two marijuana articles before you this evening. We do not want marijuana retail shops in our town. We value the energy and the resources that Situate Facts has dedicated to substance abuse. Our town is recognized as a state and a national leader in opioid addiction prevention, which is reason enough, in my opinion, not to support the recreational sale of pot. It was a moral decision for the board, and I hope you will agree and vote yes to support those bylaws before you. So in closing, I want to just tell you that I'm honored to serve Situate, and I want to thank my colleagues on the board for their service. It is evident that your dedication, from your dedication, how much Situate means to each and every one of you. And I want to thank you again all for coming, and let's have some great robust and respectful debate. Thank you. From the Advisory Committee, Chairman Lincoln Heinemann. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I'd like to just start by uh, reiterating what Chair Curran said uh, regarding the new town administrator, Jim Boudreaux. Uh, it's been great uh, working with him in his first few months on the job and the continued great work of Nancy Holt is, as the finance director for the town and the town accountant. Um, both of their work over the last few months has been uh, very helpful in uh, especially with the storms that we've experienced um, in our, the work of the advisory committee uh, working through those budgets and reviewing those budgets in a timely way. Um, I'd, I'd just like to say uh, I'm humbled to be here uh, as the chair of the advisory committee and would like to just briefly touch on uh, for folks who may not know what the advisory committee is and what uh, the committee's role is. Um, 
as the presiding officer of the legislative branch, the town moderator um, appoints nine citizens to, the, to serve uh, three year staggered terms on the advisory committee. The advisory committee each year and also before a special town meeting in the fall uh, as necessary, uh, conducts hearings, uh, reviews all materials, and makes recommendations to the voters on both the operating budget, the capital budget, and the other articles that come before uh, town meeting. Uh, the committee's comments and recommendations on all warrant articles are published and available in the advisory committee booklets that were available uh, both online for the last several weeks and in the foyer uh, when you came in this evening. Uh, the, uh, I, I'd like to speak in specifically on the process this year for the last several months. Uh, the advisory committee has met uh, sometimes long evenings on a weekly basis to review each budget, both large and small, of, uh, th that are being proposed uh, in the current budget in, under Article 4 in front of you. Um, on a line item by line item basis, the department, uh, the, excuse me, the committee met with all of the department heads, um, heard achievements of those departments for the last year, um, discussed uh, and heard goals going forward in the new upcoming fiscal year that's beginning July 1st, and considered the department uh, requests and then the town administrator's recommended budget amounts uh, for uh, each of the budgets. All of this work led to, uh, again, the booklet, the booklet in front of you, um, detailing the town's revenues and expenditures, a discussion on, from, the school, uh, from the school department on their budget request, and um, new this year, although I think it has been in a booklet in the past, a uh, discussion on and a demonstration of what uh, debt, the current debt that, they ha that is outstanding for the town, uh, what that looks like on an average tax bill going out over the next 20 years. Um, with that said, I'd certainly welcome uh, any thoughts on what an advisory committee booklet uh, should have in the future. Um, again, we are a uh, group of citizens. We are here on your behalf as part of the legislature and not the executive of the town. And um, it, we, uh, again, I would welcome any uh, particular things that folks would like to see in future advisory committee booklets. So you can certainly feel free to uh, contact me um, to ask about that. Uh, and, and, and then just to, just to finish, uh, I'd just like to reiterate what uh, the moderator said earlier, which is you folks are the legislature of the town. So while uh, the selectmen are bringing uh, articles and pe uh, petitioners are bringing articles before you, and the advisory committee has made uh, recommendations and, and votes on each of those, you folks and only you folks uh, will make the decision about what passes and what does not. So I know takes that responsibility very seriously, um, but I want to reiterate how important that is uh, from the perspective of, of the advisory committee. Um, so thank you very much, and look forward to uh, Echo Chair Kern's uh, thought of having a respectful and robust debate going forward this evening. Thank you. Delivering the evening's final report uh, from the Capital Planning Commission Chairman Christopher Karsha. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you all for coming. Um, make it brief. Capital Planning Committee is in charge of taking all the requests from all the town departments of capital improvements, large, uh, large purchases to uh, equipment and maintenance projects. And we review these projects against a set of criteria and determine if they are to be presented to the board and thus to you. This year, the original requests were for almost $22 million in uh, maintenance projects and equipment replacement. Between capital planning, the board of, uh, board of selectmen, and Nancy Holt, the finance director, we whittled that down to $10,435,000, um, which we think is all very well spent and wisely spent. 
Uh, it reflects uh, an attitude in capital planning to uh, stop kicking the can down the road and start uh, bringing us up into the modern days. We, you know, we're buying 11 trucks for the DPW because we kept kicking the can down the road. We're buying a new boat for, or we've recommended a new boat for the Harbor Master because we can't keep buying used equipment. Um, of all the requests, the Capital Planning Committee was unanimous in all but three of them in supporting them. The three that we weren't unanimous on, we'll, uh, we'll get into as we go line by line through the capital budget later in the meeting. Uh, other than that, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. I'd like to thank the 828 people, uh, registered voters, who've turned out tonight. Please give yourselves a round of applause. All right. Um, I'm going to try to put my foot on the accelerator here a little bit. We're going to, uh, at the suggestion of the town administrator, uh, Mr. Boudreau, um, he suggested to me that we take up something called a consent agenda. Now, that's something that we used here maybe about once 10 years ago, and it's used in some other towns. And what it involves is grouping together certain articles that, you know, nobody ever asks a question about. We don't really, I don't really need to hear a speech on every time on one of these articles that nobody really seems to do anything other than vote unanimously for. So what we've done is we've lumped them into a group and with a single two-thirds vote, we could dispose of articles 1, 2, 10, 11, 13, and 14. Yes. Sounds pretty good, huh? Okay, so, but before I can do that, well, we're going to let Chairman Curran come up to the mic. Uh, just remember, if you really are dying to, to talk about indemnifying Chapter 90 something or other, just say, uh, no, I don't want to do this, and we won't do it. So, Madam Chairman, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that the town vote to take Articles 1, 2, 10, 11, 13 and 14 out of order and that they be passed by consent in accordance with the motion shown on the consent agenda distributed this evening. Okay, it's been moved, seconded, because they're all lumped together. We don't need to discuss it. Uh, does anybody object to taking 1, 2, 10, 11, 13, and 14 out of order? No. How about you, Peter, Mr. Deputy Moderator? Anybody out back? I shouldn't say out back, that sounds bad. Uh, anybody in the music hall uh, have an issue? <coughs> Kathy, you can just shout. Three do not agree. Three do not agree. No, 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 that's okay. This just requires a two-thirds vote. That helps me identify what we're gonna do here. So. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Deputy Moderator to take a voice vote in the music room and under the section 20,100 and whatever it was, you can declare a two-thirds vote if you so find, and I can do the same thing here. All those in favor of the consent agenda and the motion made by Chairman Curran signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous, but one. <laughs> now let's see what's happening back there. There were two objections in the music room. Uh, I declare that this, our, this consent agenda passed on a two-thirds voice vote. Okay, so. Article three. I thought you'd like that one, you know, it's, it's down. Oh my, okay. Selectman Danny. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Moderator, would you like for me to just read the motion and go 
letter by letter? Uh, when you're old? Or? <laughs> yeah, regrettably, uh, I think you'll have to read all those. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just only asking to see if anybody wanted to one of them. I'm going to read them through or, or no. Yeah, we'll read them all off yeah, and then we'll go enough. back and do the holes. All right, folks. <laughs> this is going to take a while. That's not a reflection on John. I'll try to read fast. Bear with me. Uh, I move the town appropriate and borrow or transfer from available funds in the Treasury in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 7 and 8, and any other enabling authority the following sums of money totaling for the purpose of funding the cost of the fiscal year 2019 capital improvement plan submitted in accordance with section 6-6 of the situate home rule charter as follows. A, I move to raise and appropriate the sum of $30,000 from Whittles Walk Enterprise Fund receipts for design and engineering of improvements to the Whittles Walk Golf Facility. B, I move to borrow the sum of $2,200,000 for the purpose of replacing the irrigation system at the Whittle Walk, Whittles Walk Golf Course. C. I move to raise and appropriate the sum of $40,000 from Whittles Walk Enterprise Fund receipts for replacement of netting at the Whittles Walk Golf Course. D. I move to borrow the sum of $200,000 for the purpose of reestablishing the septic loan program. E, I move to borrow the sum of $200,000 for the purpose of road and sidewalk improvements. F, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $50,000 for the purpose of phase two of the renovations at Hummerock Fire Station. G, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $26,440 from the capital stabilization fund and the sum of $133,560 for the purchase of radio equipment and infrastructure upgrades. H, I move to transfer from the Beach Revolving Fund the sum of $273,560 for the rehabilitation of the Egypt Beach parking lot. I, I move to borrow the sum of $200,000 for the purpose of foreshore protection. J, I move to transfer from the Capital Stabilization Fund the sum of $140,000 for phase three of the expansion of the Cudworth Cemetery. K, I move to transfer from the free cash the sum of $200,000 for the replacement of vehicle number 1-7, a 1993 international six-wheel dump truck for the, Department of, uh, the DPW, Department of Public Works, Highway Division. L, I move to transfer from the free cash the sum of $437,500 from the Capital Stabilization Fund, the sum of $100,000 for the purpose of replacing the 1987 Rescue Fire Pumper. M, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $983,650 for the design, engineering, and bid documents for a new senior center at the Old Gate School site. N. I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $300,000 for the purpose of installing communication equipment at fire station number one, that's First Parish Road, and number four, Hummer Rock. O, I move to raise and appropriate the sum of $100,000 for the purpose of updating the town's master plan. P, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $70,000 for the replacement of vehicle number 2-3, a 2005 Chevy 350, or I guess it's 3,500 um, dump truck with plow for DPW ground, a public grounds division. Q, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $70,000 for, uh, 70, for the replacement of vehicle number 1-3, a 2005 Ford dump truck with plow for the DPW highway division. R, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $100,000 for the purchase of technology for the school department. S, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $70,000 for the replacement of vehicle number 2-7, a 2001 Ford dump truck with plow for the DPW Highway Division. T, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $40,000 for the replacement of vehicle number 1-1, one a 2008 Chevy Silverado Silverado pickup truck with plow for the DPW Highway Division. U, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $65,000 and transfer from the Capital Stabilization Fund the sum of $15,000 for the purchase of conducting a long-term viability study of Hatherley, Cushing, and the Wampatuck Schools. 
Uh, v, there is no motion. W, I move to transfer free cash the sum of $70,000 for the replacement of vehicle 2-4, a 2005 Chevy 3500 pickup truck with plow for the DPW Public Grounds Division. X, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $45,000 for the purpose of a design of improvements to the boys and girls locker room, locker rooms at the uh, Situate High School. Why? I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $45,000 for the replacement of vehicle number 2-1, a 2005 Chevy 250 pickup truck with plow for the DPW grounds, public grounds division. Z, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $32,000 for the purpose of replacing the expansion tanks and the boilers at the Situate High School. Double A. I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $120,000 for the replacement of four SPED, special education, vans for the school department. Double B, I move to transfer from premiums received from the issuance of bond anticipation notes the sum of $99,603 and transfer from the stabilization fund the sum of $57,897 for the replacement of the flooring in the Situate High School science wing, cafeteria era, area, and stair treads. Double C, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $50,000 for the replacement of carpeting for the schools. Double D, uh, there is no listed article. Double E, I move to raise and appropriate the sum of $96,000 and transfer that sum to, the, sum to the capital stabilization fund for a future capital purchase. Double F, I move to borrow the sum of $500,000 for the purpose of fully implementing the copper reduction measures in the wastewater treatment plan. Double G, I move to transfer from the premiums received from the issuance of bond anticipation notes the sum of $23,594 and to borrow, borrow the sum of $226,406 for the rehabilitation of the belt filter press and grit sludge dewatering system. Double H, I move to transfer from the Sewer Enterprise Capital Stabilization Fund the sum of $38,280 for the rehabilitation of the aeration tank number one and two. Double I, I move to transfer from sewer enterprise retained earnings the sum of $50,160 for the final phase of the rehabilitation of the Sand Hills and Chain Pond pump stations. Double J, I move to transfer from the sewer enterprise retained earnings the sum of $48,400 for the replacement of vehicle number 54, a 2005 F-150 pickup with plow. Double K, I move to transfer from the sewer enterprise retained earnings the sum of $100,000 for the replacement of two grinders and improvements to the digester, polymer, and sludge handling system. Double L, I move to transfer from the transfer station retained earnings the sum of $40,000 to sandblast and paint the scale. Double M, I move to transfer from the annual town meeting, April 2016, Article 4Q, Maple Street Stamp Pipe, the sum of 80,000 for valve replacements at the Creelman Tank. Double N, I move to transfer from the annual town meeting, April 2016, Article 4Q, Maple St uh, Street Stand Pipe, the sum of $450,000 for the replacement of the chemical feed tanks at the water treatment plant. Double O, I move to borrow $53,000 for the replacement of vehicle number 34, a 2005 Chevy pickup with plow for the water department. Double P, I move to transfer from the annual town meeting, April 2016, Article 4Q, Maple Street stamp, uh, stamp pipe, the sum of $175,000 for the water meter replacements. Double Q, I move to borrow 65,000 for the replacement of vehicle number 37, a 2006 Chevy 2500 van with plow for the water department. Double R, I move to transfer from the annual town meeting April 2016, Article 4Q, Maple Street, stamp pipe, the sum of 5,000, transfer from premiums received from the issuance of bond anticipation notes a sum of $133,490, and borrow the sum of $1,120,510 for the purposes of upgrading well number 17A. 
double S. I move to borrow 51,000 for the replacement of vehicles number 33, a 2006 utility truck with plow for the water department, double T. I move to transfer from the waterways mm -hmm. retained earnings the sum of $136,606 and transfer from the premiums received from the issuance of bond anticipation notes the sum of $4,004 for the replacement and addition of pilings in the town's marinas. And finally, double U, I move to uh, borrow the sum of $430,000 for the purpose of replacing vessel number three, a fire pump and monitor. It's been moved, seconded. Doesn't John have a beautiful reading voice? <laughs> Mr. Moderator, point of order? Uh, yes, sir. Question for you, Jay Heibegger, 14 Border Street, situate, obviously. Um, I couldn't help but notice that item V was not moved. So is it safe to say that's off the agenda for tonight? Which item? Item B? V, yes. v as in Victor? OK, yes. yeah. Okay. Apparently, it's been withdrawn. It's the, been withdrawn. The not reading it was deliberate. Good. Can we also have clarification and confirmation that that equipment has not been moved no, or any part of it? No, you're out of order. Not at this time. Has it been included in item Sir, G? you're out of order. Not at this time. Uh, we, you raised a point of order. You've had your point of order. Now you're asking for information. That's a different matter. Okay. Uh, all right. So what we're going to do now is, well, I'll ask you to turn over to page 23 of your advisory committee booklet. The advisory committee has put together a very nice list of all these items. So having turned to page 23, what I will do in this room and the deputy moderator will do in our auxiliary room uh, is I am going to read off each of these items, A, apparently not B, uh, C and so on. If you wish to have a discussion, an explanation, whatever, on any of these items, just shout out, and we don't usually encourage shouting, but in this case, it's okay, shout out in a firm, clear voice, hold. And what we'll do is we'll mark that for later consideration and we'll return to that so that you can ask your question or discuss the merits of the particular problem. Once we have all those holds in this room and the deputy moderator has taken them in the auxiliary room, the deputy moderator will come over, will reconcile the list so that everyone's hold is accounted for. And then we'll vote all of the items that were not held and then we'll return to discussions on the held items. Now, uh, for the lady who had asked me about why we count things, again, there's lots of things in here like two-thirds votes which have to go off to the Department of Revenue and Bond Council, and they're very fussy about the way things get voted. So not only did poor Mr. Danny, he have to read that vast amount of verbiage, uh, which was with no reflection on him, probably not very entertaining for either us or him, uh, but we then have to vote some of these in a special manner. So that's what we're going to do. So page 23, I will begin. A, no hold. C, C is held. Oh, well, so, well, there wasn't a motion on B, so how can I do B? Hey? V, Mr. we're not up to V yet. Mr. Moderator. Ah, uh, yes, go ahead. Ann Burbine, Pennycrest Road. It is my understanding that Mr. Danahy deleted purchase two automatic license plate recognitions, which is V, not B. B is still on the table. That is my understanding. Is All that right. correct? Is, I, I, I would never bet against Ms. Burbine. So, <laughs> uh, Mr. Danahy, why don't you enlighten us? Yeah, uh, I believe, uh, Mr. Moderator, the comment was in reference to V as in Victor. Uh, I had actually did not read the motion on uh, V as in Victor, nor did I read anything on the double D. But uh, with respect to um, letter B. Um, oh, so that is on the is, table. It is. So I just didn't hear B, V, it all sounded the same. My apologies. I have children that play rock and roll. Um, it's getting difficult. All right. My apologies. B. Oh, my. All right, I got that. 
Um, all right, we did C. Uh, D. E. F. G. G is held. H. H is held. I. J. K. L. <laughs> uh, M is held. All right. All right. Um, what comes after M? N. Okay. M and N are held. O. P. Q. R. S. T. U. Now I don't have to do V, so we'll skip over that. Uh, w. X. Y. Z. Double A. Double B. Double C. Double C is held. Uh, uh, double E. Double E is held. Double F. Double G. Double H. Double I. Double J. Double K. Double L. Double M. Double N. Double O. Double P. Double Q. Double R. Double S. Double T. Double U. Ah, I see. Yeah. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do, if you'll just be patient for one moment, I'm going to ask the deputy moderator to come over with his tally so that we can reconcile them and then move forward to vote on the unheld items. Thanks, Peter. Uh, there were no holds in the uh, auxiliary campus. So, I'll accept a motion to approve all unheld items as moved by Selectman Danny. It's been moved, seconded, there being no discussion since you didn't hold them. Uh, I'll vote in here first and then we'll see what happens in the other room. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ah, very good. We'll wait for the news. Oh, okay. So voted and declared unanimous. All right. The first held item was B. Uh, and whoever held it, um, tell us all about it, please. Gentleman to my right. Mr. Moderator, James Hunt, Manlot Road. Uh, irrigation improvements to Widow's Walk in the amount of 2200000 for an enterprise that has zero retained earnings. I, I question uh, the, uh, the uh, viability of uh, a bond. What is the bonding period, if I might ask whoever can answer? What, sorry, Mr. Hunt. When's what is the, bond? the bonding period for the irrigation system at, window, at Widow's 20 Rock? years. Uh, 20 years to pay back 2200000 Does, in fact, Widow's Walk generate sufficient revenue to satisfy that bond and retain earnings for, for other uh, expansion, <laughs> expansions uh, considered primarily to the building. Can you assure us that Widow's Walk revenues are indeed adequate? Yes. Thank you. Gentleman to my left. Scott Greenbaum, 40 Damon Road. Sir. When I first uh, moved in town, came to my first meeting, general funds were used to make up for a shortfall of the revenues of the Widow's Walk to um, pay the bonds. 
that was repeated at least for 10 years. At each one of those meetings, the town guaranteed the citizens that it would be repaid. I see no plan for that repayment. My first question is, which probably no one here has any, the data. How much money did we take out of general funds to pay the debt service for Widow's Walk prior, to, uh, over all those years? I have no idea how many years, 10 or 15 years, but it's, to my recollection, it was two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars a year, so we're two to three hundred, two to three million dollars in the hole. So we should be paying back our debts from Widow's Walk first to the town taxpayers, and then the second question is: When this Widow's Walk was put up, it was told that it was going to be a cash cow, and we'd actually have money coming back after operating expenses. Obviously, we're now spending money that Widow's Walk can't um, support at this point. So I'd like to know when the town is going to be um, reimbursed from the Enterprise Zone for Widow's Walk for the debt service that we paid for them and how much that is. Scott, Scott that's, news, that's news to me. It's the first time I've heard that the uh, past, whether it was 96, 7, or 8, prior to my coming here, uh, that the town used general funds. I'm more than happy to look into that and find out what exactly the amount was used in the years uh, or year that uh, that funds were there. I don't have an answer for you. With respect to um, going forward with the project as a whole, we're looking at revenues annually now. Now that the bond's been paid off as of last year, of anywhere between 250 to 300,000 conservatively. So what we were doing is all the revenues that we we're generating from all the golfing was used to pay off the bond. I can't say back in 1995 or 96 it was wise for the town to get into the golf business. What I can tell you though is today is that it is a revenue source. As this gentleman over here, Mr. Hunt, had mentioned, with a $2.2 million um, bond going out to pay for the irrigation system, that's well enough annually to be able to pay that and then also begin to plan for future expansion or improvements of the golf course. For the past 20 years, the money has gone to pay for the bond has not gone for any of the improvements. And I defy anybody driving by who's been there will look at the building and notice that it's in disrepair. So that's one of the other capital projects that we're looking at trying to do, generate a plan to say what are we going to do going forward. When that building was built, it was not built to be as a um, facility. It was only used for the golf carts. It was an afterthought. They ended up putting up the structure on top of it. And where do they put the bathrooms in the best place for a view of the, uh, the river and the North River and the view? So obviously it was not well thought out. It was an afterthought. So that's why I say to you, I think, you know, with the irrigation system that's before us, the useful life is 20 years. I was stunned to find out last year that we're going to need to put in a new irrigation system. Um, the benefit of it is, is that it's now going to be a more modern one, one that's going to be more um, efficient for conservation of water. And as I said to somebody early today who called me about it, I said, well, there are two things you need to run a golf course. You need water and you need a lawnmower. And so if we're not going to have an irrigation system, then that's going to interrupt your golf course and it's not going to be a good golf course and it's, it's doomed for failure. So as much as I would like to spend the money on other items within the golf course and, and build up the retained earnings, um, this is a must need. And so that's the reason why it's being presented to you tonight. Thank you, John. Uh, by the way, I did move to town after you did. So my first meeting was in 99. So um, I think we need to have a plan to, to pay back the uh, town for its tax money and find out what that number is. Um, how much tax, how much of general funds was used to pay off that service at the golf course. It should be in the records, thanks. I can't tell if you're in line or just hanging out. Ah, okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Deputy Moderator, do we have anyone in uh, the reserve room who wishes to speak? Just send them up or let us know otherwise. Sure. 
I can assure you we're going to be in the gymnasium next time. We have a, <laughs> we have a speaker who's coming forward. It's a bit of a maze back there, so I, I don't know, I might have to put breadcrumbs down. No, no, nothing, nobody yet? Are you the speaker? Oh, mic in your hand, you look like a speaker to me. I, I, I'm gonna go look. My name is Eileen Donaldson. I live in Satua Trail. Yeah, I like that. Um, I, very simple for me. Repay the debt. Um, why are we, who don't use the golf course or whatever, liable or responsible for paying for something that is recreational, that there are a group of people who like it, who want it, who need it, then put the heads together and find a way to pay for it. That's it. Oh, ma'am, could you just identify yourself again, please? Eileen Donaldson, I'm at Satua Trail, 64 Satua Trail. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. So, um, require uh, <laughs> approval of this motion requires a two thirds vote. The motion was I move to borrow the sum of $2.2 million for the purpose of replacing the irrigation system at the Widow's Walk Golf Course. There being no further discussion, I'll take the vote in this room while the deputy moderator takes the vote in the other. Two-thirds vote required. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Declaration in the reserve room was not two thirds. Uh, while I think it was two thirds in here, the only way to reconcile the difference is by counting the vote. So, would the tellers kindly take their positions? And, Mr. Deputy Moderator, would you kindly uh, make the count calls in the auxiliary room? Uh, as we go. You have voting cards. Are the tellers ready? Are any tellers not ready? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Allison, you'll be. How are you, Mike? This is a shoes off I'm count. Okay. <laughs> okay. All those in favor of the motion which I read back to you, please raise your, what color is it? Okay, thank you. Pink voting card. This is going to take a while. Oh, yeah, do a good thing. Ooh. Yeah, hold those cards high. Your vote won't count unless Allison can count it. That's it.
Mr. Moderator. Ann Burbine. Unless you're raising a point of order. Who's counting this section? You sent him over there. Good, that's a point of order. You want me to go count it? You need another counter, Kathy. Kathy, do you want to count this one? Yeah. Ms. Burbine, thank you. Can you put the names in that I'm supposed to call? Thank you. Set. Thank you. What I'm going to do is I'll call off the names of each tower and section, and Madam Clerk will record the vote. And then we'll take the no votes after that. Right rear, Chris Meraki. 101. Did you hear that? 101? Yes. Thank you. Right front, Penny Scott Pipes. 75. 75. Center front, Board of Selectmen and Advisory, Allison Short. 54. 54. 54. 59 or 54, Allison? 54. Thank you. So you were wrong. 54. Okay. Center back, Susan Frankel. 55. 55. Thank you. These are getting longer. Center rear next to visitor non-voter second section, Jack Manning. 46. 46. Left front, uh, Penny. 77. Thank you. 7-7. Seven, seven. Left rear, Jack Manning. 92. 92. Two nine. Two nine total in the auxiliary room. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Moderator. You all set? Okay. All those opposed, please raise high your pink voting cards. We got everybody. I see a gentleman over here still holding his card. Got him? Yep, I guess so. Just. All set, Penny? Okay. Right rear, Chris Mararchy. Uh oh. He just left. Is he counting out in the hall? Yep. Oh. 
Well, too late. I'm not going to recount. Ca he's counting the checkers and the, the workers in the back. Oh. Oh. Twenty-eight. Two eight. Two eight. Right front, Penny Scott Pipes. Eleven. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Uh, center front uh, and officials, Allison Short. Thirteen, one three. Thank you. Center back, Susan Frankel. Twenty-five, two five. Two five. Thank you. Center rear, Jack Manning. Twenty two zero. Um, left front, Penny. Twenty five. Yeah, twenty five. Two five. Yeah. Thank you. Left rear, Jack Manning. Thirteen, one three. One three. And Mr. Deputy Moderator? Seven. Seven. So, it passed. By a vote of 529 votes in the affirmative and 142 votes in the negative, the motion passes by the required quantum of vote. <laughs> the next hold was on item H. Oh, pardon me. Sorry, that was the hold I read. Uh, item C. No, so there wasn't a hold on B, and then C follows. C follows B. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not ready to go to G just yet. There was a hold on C. Oh, yes, there was. Oh, yes. I don't mean to sound like a speak and say, but you know, A, B, C. Even I got that one. Okay, who held item C? Missed, oh, well, you should identify. I, I would prefer a chair seat. All right. Uh, please identify yourself, striped gentleman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Chris Karsha, Stockbridge Road, Chairman Capital Planning. Uh, speaking on behalf of Capital Planning right now, when this item came before us, um, we had quite a few questions. I'm going to read uh, a letter that one of our members wrote regarding this. He kind of he nailed all, the, all my talking points. So uh, in regards to the $40,000 requested to replace the netting at, I believe it's the fifth hole? Yes. Yep. Um, it's netting that uh, separates the hole from, there are condos like, uh, directly adjacent to it. I'm not a golfer. I have literally never stepped foot on this place. Um, but the netting at the golf course, uh, capital planning voted unanimously not to recommend this item to town meeting because there is no f zero, no formal agreement in place between the condo association and the town. We asked that they uh, look and could not find any agreement. There's no plot plan showing where this netting lays. Um, we don't even know if it's on our property or their property. And part of the discussion was that it was a little on ours and a little on theirs. Um, so no plot plan, you know, uh, discuss showing exactly where the fence is. Uh, we don't know if it's on town land or condominium land. We asked for the plot plan, town was unable to produce one. The existing fence is dilapidated, very poor state of repair. No formal request by the condominium association to the town to repair or replace this fence. Uh, and they've taken no action on their own to replace it on their own. Again, if it's not on our property, we have no obligation to fix it. Before appropriating money for this purpose, town meeting should receive a formal written agreement that has been vetted by town council, a plot plan showing where the fence is located, and a formal request from the condominium association to do something regarding the fence. It should also be determined who the owner of the land where the fence will be located and who is in charge of the maintenance of this fence going forward and what the costs are going to be for that maintenance. Uh, for all those reasons, the uh, 
Capital Planning Committee was strongly unanimous in uh, not recommending this article. It's a small article, but it's $40,000 that we can put towards something else. Gentleman to my right. Uh, Mr. Moderator, John Whitaker, 594 Country Way. I also am a member of the Capital Budget Advisory Committee and just want to second the excellent points made by our chair. I might add that it's not clear who's liable if a golf ball goes sailing through this thing and does serious damage. We hope it won't, but it might. Last winter, I t sunny day, I took a walk down to look at the fence. The fence is falling apart, it's dilapidated. No one seems to have concerned themselves with it for years. So for all the reasons stated, let this go for a year. And we'll bring it back next year with the right documentation and the right information for town meeting. Thank you. Gentleman to my left. Bernie Westerfeld, Harborview Road. I have several clients at that specific area, the golf course. I have heard the golf balls bounce off their house. It's, I believe we just voted $2.2 million to put an irrigation system in so the town has financial responsibility. We just voted on that. Spend the $40,000 to let these people sit in the backyard in the summer. They can't sit in the backyard without wearing helmets. Uh, uh, hold on. Lady to my right. I'm Eileen Farrer, 38 New Kent Street. I'm president of the Fairway Village Condo Association. It is absolutely essential for the safety of Fairway Village residents and their guests that Widows Walk install a proper golf net at the fifth hole. We are regularly inundated with golf balls, and it is just a matter of time before someone is seriously injured or even killed. The, it is the only hole, the fifth hole is the only one where golfers, when teeing off, are hitting the ball directly toward private residences, homes. I've had painting contractors almost hit. I've had roofing contractors almost hit. Landscapers. And I have uh, almost lost my own head, and my daughter has almost lost hers when sitting on our deck trying to enjoy the, the good summer weather. <coughs> and if we've had people even say that they are afraid to let their grandchildren play on their decks or in the immediate area because of the number of balls that we get over on our, on our property. And I'm not even talking about property damage, uh, broken windows, uh, damaged deck furniture, but I am talking about the seriousness of the accident that could happen to an individual. And it is my understanding that the town, if someone gets seriously injured, would be held liable in that case. The other thing I would like to address to the gentleman of the Capital Committee um, who said that the town has never been contacted about that. I have, doc I have a folder of documents which I have sent to selectmen and to the previous TA to Al Bangert, to Bob Sanderson. This has been going on for several years now. And something really needs to be done for protection. A town engineer did come out at Mr. Bangert's request. And the town engineer said that the existing net, and I put that in quotes because it's a joke. It's not long enough, it's not tall enough, um, and it's not a proper golf net. But it is the posts that are presently there, which are really just flag posts. One is on town property, one is on our property, one is on the property line. Now this is what the town engineer said to Mr. Banger. So I do respectfully uh, disagree with the statements made by the head of the capital planning committee. And I was unaware of that meeting because I would definitely have been there. So with that, I would like respectfully 
to request the vote of all the citizens here in favor of installing a proper golf net, a protective golf net at the fifth hole before someone loses their life. Thank you. Selectman Dennehy. Just briefly, um, I did meet with Eileen and we talked about it. Um, and I know that, um, I know um, at the time, uh, Al Banger, the temporary TA, was looking at this issue last year. Um, for those who golf there, they know exactly the hole. Uh, you, you hit a shot off the tee, and if you hit it down the fairway, you're really close to uh, the green. And this is Fairway Village, so when you go down the driftway, it's the um, Condominium Association right after North River, and it literally abuts up against the green. And they originally have to understand when the golf course was built, Fairway Village wasn't built. It was a 40B that came after the fact. The problem, though, is it's too close to the fifth hole. And when they built the golf course, um, they did sandwich a lot of the holes in. They did a great job, design-wise. But it's really close. Two um, uh, vignettes, um, one of which Eileen had shared with me, was that not only are they getting golf balls directly over the existing net. Now, the existing net has dropped. And it's not sufficient. It really needs to be wider. It needs to be taller. Um, but she had said that if you sit out in the back deck, you can see golf balls there. I've seen it when people have played there. I've never hit it there, but I'm saying because I'm not that good. I usually try to short up. But the balls are going there. But beyond that, they're actually going on the side. They're actually going to be over the house. Another vignette that somebody had shared with me is how they were golfing. Somebody they were with hit the golf ball. They knew they hit it over the um, the green. They ended up actually hitting it towards the house, and then hit the house. Uh, when they got to the green, they looked in, and they happened to see a cat in the window. The cat in the window was actually reaching up, uh, trying to get the ball. The ball was lodged at the top of the window. So it is a danger. As far as liability, this is a, a nuisance. It's ongoing. From my perspective, I think it's a town issue the town has to address. The last thing is this. You know, we, if, if you've been to Fenway, you've been to some of these baseball parks, you know, a lot of netting is going up directly or along the sidelines. Because when balls are being hit, they're hit pretty quickly. Same thing with golf balls. There's a lot of torque that's going through. The balls are flying. So from our perspective, to put this in and get a net up there it would be for the health and safety, certainly of those residents. And that's the reason why it's, it's put a part of this, uh, this plan that's coming out of the Enterprise Fund. But again, that's up to you folks how you want to decide. But that's the reason why it's here. Lady to my left. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Dow. I live at 52 New Kent Street, otherwise known as Fairway Village. I grew up in this town. I was born here in 1968. Fortunate enough to move away, come back, back in 2002. I was one of the first residents to move in at Fairway Village. I was the first 40B tenant. I'm very proud to be back here in my hometown of Situate. I'm very proud to have been able to raise my two children, now young men, in the hometown that I grew up in. I'm also a golfer. <laughs> and I've, I've conquered Widow's Walk more than one time, not at a very good rate, I'm afraid. <laughs> but I, I see the issue from both a golfer standpoint and from the standpoint of my neighbors. I do not live in that building that faces the fairway. However, I have come to know over the past 15 years the dangerousness that these people face day in and day out, particularly in the nice weather when golfers are out there enjoying themselves. They're out there in fear for their lives. Many have been closely hit, almost hit with golf balls. I certainly wouldn't let my kids play out front in the parking lot riding bikes um, for fear that they were going to be hit because many times those good golfers actually hit those balls right over the building. In the 15 years that I've been there, the golf course has been wonderful to work with. They have maintained the netting. Um, over the past couple of years, it's, it's been let go. It's no longer useful. It needs to be replaced. And in my opinion, $40,000 is not a lot of money when it, you compare it to the liability that the town could face should someone be hit in the head, debilitated, killed, or whatever. And again, like Eileen, I'm not talking about the property damage. That's something that the owners knew when they move in that could be a possibility. I'm talking about life. 
I'm talking about quality of life, and I'm talking about safety. To me, I see this as a health issue. And thank you for supporting the motion, John. Before I recognize the next speaker, uh, Mr. Deputy Moderator, if anyone in the reserve room would like to speak, why don't you send them out now and I'll move to recognize the next speaker. Gentleman to my right. Uh, Mr. Moderator James Hunt, Manlot Road, through you to town council. I'm concerned about, as a member and a, and a taxpayer, I'm concerned about the potential for liability. Could we have a comment from council as to the potential liability on the town's part? Madam Town Council. No, you'll have to use a microphone, I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Thank you. Hello. If there are golf balls hit from the public golf course and there is someone injured, there is always a potential for liability. Thank you. Well, I, uh, in fairness to counsel, you don't want her to give the blueprint for suing us. So, you know, I'm just saying. So, anyway, uh, gentleman to my left. Joseph Gibbons, 223 Gannett Road, member of the Capital Planning Committee. The, the reason I, I went against this article was that the town uh, management, the administration, did not present us with any documentation. There's no agreement between the parties. There's no plot plan. I, I mean, I think it should come back next year. Do, do your homework, come back before the board with the proper documentation, and don't just write a blank check for $40,000 without any, without any backup. Lady to my right. Ann, Ann Burbine, 10 Pennycrest Road. I move the question. All right, a motion to move the question is a motion to terminate debate. If you're in favor of terminating debate, you vote aye. If you want to debate the matter for, uh, further, you vote no. It requires a two-thirds vote. We have two rooms. I'll take, uh, Mr. Deputy Moderator, if you could take a vote uh, in the reserve room, I would appreciate it. I'll proceed to a vote here. All those in favor of the motion to terminate debate signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. no. <laughs> Unanimous, but two. But we had to hear from the other side. I declare that the motion passed by the required two-thirds vote. That brings us to the motion. I move to raise and appropriate the sum of $40,000 from Widow's Walk Enterprise Fund receipts for the replacement of netting at the Widow's Walk Golf Course. All those in favor. Oh, it requires a majority vote. That's the good news. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. All right, we'll see what's going on out back.
All right. Um, so vote and declared passed by majority vote.